everyone. My name is Miss Hu and I'm a physics teacher. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the apparatus for an electrical experiment based on this circuit diagram. So this kind of circuit setup can be used to investigate a few different kinds of electrical experiments. One of which could be to investigate the relationship between potential difference and current, or even to determine how the factors affect the resistance of the conductor. For example, how the length of a conductor affects its resistance. So let's take a closer look at the apparatus that we have. So over here, we have a bunch of connecting wires with crocodile clips. We have the superstar of our circuit. In my case, I'm using constantan wire, but depending on what your lab has, we could be using Eureka wire or Thomson wire. It doesn't matter as long as this is the wire we're going to investigate. Normally, it has to have high resistance. We also have a meter rule here, which is uh, normally used if we want to make sure that we can fix the length or if we're going to change the length as the factor. We, of course, have our power supply, dry cells with the dry cell holders switch, voltmeter and ammeter, and the rear set. Alright, so let's take a look at the batteries first. Now, what we have here is a battery holder. And if you take a closer look, you should be able to see that it's already indicated where the positive and negative terminals must be placed inside the battery. But another thing that always confuses students is how come there's a whole bunch of red knobs here but only one black knob. So, take a closer look. You can see that the black knob is labeled as negative, while the red knobs have a bunch of numbers there. So, what does this mean? If we take our dry cells and place them in the battery, I'm just going to make sure that I've connected the batteries correctly based on the terminals. If I take a wire and connect oops, Connect it to the negative terminal here. If I take one of these wires and connect it to the negative terminal, that's of course to the negative connection of these dry cells. However, these red knobs give me the option of deciding how many batteries I'd like to use in series in the circuit. So if I connect this wire to the first knob, that means I'm only taking one dry cell. If I connect it to the second, not two dry cells, but not three dry cells. If I had a fourth battery, that would be to the fourth knot. This gives us the flexibility of determining how many batteries we'd like to use in the circuit, regardless of how many are actually connected here. So for example, I have three batteries in series, but if I only want to use, say, only one battery, then I connect it to just the first one. Even though I have three batteries here, Connecting this wire to only the first knob means I'm only using one battery. Now, each battery is 1.5 volts. So based on the circuit, we need only 3 volts. So although I have 3 batteries here, I just need to connect this connected wire to the second knob. And I'm only going to be using 3 volts. By the way, whether you connect a crocodile clip to the top part of the knob or unscrewing it and clipping it to the bottom, it doesn't matter as long as the metal part of the crocodile clip is in contact with the metal part of the screw. Also, the colors of the crocodile clips do not matter. The red and black is just for human beings, you know, to be able to discern one wire to another. Sometimes you can even buy batteries that are colored as green or yellow. Really, really doesn't matter. So, that's for our dry cell. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push all these apparatus to one side to clear the middle of the table so that we can focus on our setup. Okay, next, we're going to connect the switch to the circuit. It doesn't matter whether you connect positive or negative to the switch because switches don't have positive and negative terminals. You can just connect directly like this. Even if you swap it out, it doesn't matter. Next, we're going to connect the ammeter to the circuit. Now, if you take a closer look at the ammeter, you can see that the knobs are labeled with positive and negative symbols. The reason why they're labeled is to let us know which knob should be connected to the dry cell. 
So the positive terminal of the emitter must be connected to the positive terminal of the dry cell and negative to negative. So if you're looking, hey wait a minute, I already have my switch here. How does it go? So just think of it this way. This is the positive terminal of the dry cell. So positive. This is the positive terminal of the dry cell. Negative. So positive goes to positive. Now if you just like to check whether everything is working, we can connect it directly now and check. Is there a reading on the ammeter? As you can see, the ammeter needle has deflected. It's a non-zero reading. That means so far, so good, everything is connected. Correct. This is a great way to check whether everything is working. Are the dry cells working? Is the switch working? Is the ammeter working? And also to check whether our connections are correct. So, so far, so good. Now, if you've connected the ammeter wrongly, for example, if the positive has gone to the negative and the negative has gone to the positive, you'll find that the ammeter needle will deflect in the opposite direction. Let me show you. So as you can see, the emitter needle has gone behind zero. It's deflected to the left. It doesn't mean that the emitter is wrong. It just means that your connection is not correct. So again, see here, it's zero. And now it's deflected to the left. If you see this happening, that means the connections of the positive and negative are wrong. All you need to do is swap the crocodile clips. and you'll be able to get the correct reading. Next, we're going to connect the rheostat in the circuit. Now, if you take a look at the rheostat, you can see that there are two knobs at the bottom and one knob on top. Always remember that when we connect the rheostat, we connect the wires, one top and one bottom. Don't connect both at the bottom because when you do that, no matter how you slide the rheostat then, there's no change in the readings. So always one top, one bottom. Just like for the switch, the real set does not have a positive or negative terminal, so you can connect positive here or here, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to connect. And then we over here first, and one more wire. If you'd like to check whether it's working, just like just now, you can also connect it to the emitter to check. Is there a reading? To make sure the rheostat connection is correct, we can now slide the rheostat and see whether there's any changes to the emitter. I'll show you again. So as you can see, it has now deflected. If you connected both wires to the bottom knob, no matter how you slide the rheostat, there will be absolutely no change in the emitter and that's when you know, oh, there's something wrong. So if you find that there is a reading but the reading doesn't change, double check. Is your connection correct? If you find both at the bottom, remember, it's wrong. One top, one bottom. And now we come to the superstar of our circuit. The constantant wire. In your lab, you might be using another kind of material. For example, you could be using Eureka or tungsten. It doesn't matter. Depends on what your lab has and what material you would like to study. So in my case, I have constantin. We also have the voltmeter. And remember that the voltmeter must be connected in parallel to the component that we want to investigate. In this case, because this is our superstar, we're going to place the voltmeter in parallel to the constantin wire. Now, we have a choice of either putting the constantin wire as the main part of the circuit or the voltmeter. I'll show you both. Let's use the constantin wire first. So in this case, remember, constantin wires also do not have positive and negative, so it doesn't matter whether you connect one side or the other to the positive or negative terminal. So we're going to connect one wire here, and I'm just going to clip to one end of the constantin wire. And we get another wire. Oh no, we don't need to. We've got another wire right here on the real set. And we're going to clip it to a random point on constant wire. And you can see that you have emitter deflection. So if I were to slide the real set, you can see that the emitter needle is deflected. Which means that so far, so good. Connections are all doing great. How do we place a voltmeter? In parallel with the constant wire. 
Just like the M meter, the volt meter has positive and negative terminals as well on the knobs. Like the M meter, the positive terminal of the volt meter must be connected to the positive terminal of the dry cell and negative to negative. But right now you must be thinking, how do I check where's the positive and negative? The volt meter is now going to be right smack in the middle of the circuit. You do this. Just take a look at the terminals again, positive to the cells, to the wires. This is the positive point. This side is negative, goes to the real set, this is negative. So which means that when we do the connection, positive to this point, negative to this point. So I'll put a voltmeter at the back so that we can see what's going on. So positive, two positive. Here, clip it. So when we clip it, we've got to make sure that the crocodile clips are touching the same point for higher accuracy. And negative here to this negative point. And you can see already that there is a reading on the voltmeter and meter. So just to check, is this correct? Slide and see. Are the needles deflected? So in this case, we have both needles deflected, so all is good. So to investigate how the length affects the resistance, you need a meter rule. You have to check that the length between the crocodile clips is the length that we want, and we check it against the meter rule. Now, as you can see, we have two sets of crocodile clips on each of these points. We have to make sure that all the crocodile clips are moving together to get the length that we want. So you don't need multiple lengths of the clip. Just make sure the length between the crocodile clips is the length that is required. Also, make sure that the length of the wire is straight and your extra bit of the wire does not touch any points on the wire in between the crocodile clips because that could also change the reading of uh, the circuit. So one of the things that I don't like about this kind of setup is that because there are two crocodile clips on each point, meaning four crocodile clips in total, it gets a little bit tricky to try to manipulate so many crocodile clips on a piece of wire at the same time. So I'm going to show you an alternative that you can consider instead. So instead of putting the star of the show within the circuit, we're going to place a volt meter instead. Meaning, instead of having two sets of crocodile clips on each point on the wire, we're going to put the two sets of crocodile clips on the volt meter instead. Going to unclip this to move all the wires. So here, the emitter is now going to be connected directly to the voltmeter, and real set now will be connected directly to the voltmeter as well. So as you can see, there is a reading because this voltmeter is now reading the potential difference of the dry cell in this circuit. We're going to take the other set of crocodile clips and put two sets on each knob this time. So two crocodile clips on each point on the voltmeter instead of the constant wire. Is this method okay? Yes, because as long as the voltmeter is parallel to the star of the show, that's fine. So whether it's two crocodile clips on the wire or two crocodile clips on the voltmeter, it doesn't matter as long as the voltmeter is parallel to the wire. So now we only have to focus on two wires. I'm just going to clip them first randomly on the constant wire. And you can see that you have a reading. So if we slide the real set, again you can see that both the ammeter and voltmeter needles are deflecting. So I find this a lot easier to handle because all I need to do is just Manipulate the length between these two crocodile clips. So I don't have to worry about four clips, I don't need to worry about two clips. And it's a lot easier to handle this time, as you can see. So if you're studying length, then you just make sure that the length between these two crocodile clips is the length that we want. So for example, if I want to start with 10, I'll make sure I've got 10 cm, and then take the reading, and so on and so forth. So if you ever happen to find that the voltmeter needle deflects behind the zero, just like it did with the ammeter just now, for example, like this, it means that the connection is incorrect. So your positive has gone to negative, negative to positive. If you see this happening, then just swap out the connections.
and it will be correct again. So again, to make sure that the connections are correct, remember that your dry cell, positive to positive, positive to positive, and negative to negative, negative to negative. So one thing to help you make sure that your connections are correct in terms of the positive and negative is to remember for the battery, it's positive to the filters. Positive to positive, positive to positive, negative to negative, negative to negative, but for the emitter and voltmeter, negative to positive. So just like I showed you just now, if you'd like to make sure that your connection is correct along the way, just connect it to the emitter before you put in the other components to make sure that everything is working and correct. If you find the emitter needle does not deflect, even if you connect it directly to the dry cells, then something is probably not working or your connection is not correct. I hope you found this video helpful in finding out how to set up the apparatus. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to find out when more videos just like these would be released. Enjoy your experiment!